So today we're going to do a couple of questions from a mock exam for, for Saskatchewan real estate. Now, the first question says, a, um, according to the Real Estate Act, professional incompetence is when a registrant displays what attribute? Um, a is a disregard for the welfare of public served by the real estate industry. B is for fraudulent behavior. C is criminal activity or criminal behavior. D says a lack of knowledge, skill, or judgment. When we talk about professional competence for a real estate person or in the industry, the most important factors are the uh, care for the welfare of the public that you, they are serving and also for um, producing the best amount of knowledge to give to your customer or service provider, anybody you're working with as a real estate professional. Uh, skill and judgment are extremely important because you're exercising the same kind of safety you would for yourself or your own family. Um, so you're you're producing all of your advice and skills based on your fiduciary duty as a real estate agent. So they have to be as accurate as possible. They have to be to the best of your knowledge. Um, at the same time, you have to understand all the rules and regulations that apply uh, in that scenario. So when you answer that question about the Real Estate Act, and professional competence, the two things that are most important is the welfare of the public and the, lack, and the lack of knowledge or skill or judgment is what kind of puts those two together. So your answer would be A and D. Fraudulent and criminal behavior are, are, are a separate section. Uh, that's where a real estate agent would be persecuted for criminal activity for doing those two things. So they would be a little bit different. It wouldn't be an, it wouldn't be an incompetence kind of issue. The next question we move down to says, which of the following refers to whom must disclose if buying or selling real estate for their personal use? Um, obviously, as you can already imagine, a real estate agent um, has an invested interest when they're doing a real estate deal uh, because they know all of the background history on the market. They can find out things that other people might not be able to find out. So real estate agents are in a position where they constantly have to disclose everything all the time to everyone if it applies. At any given situation, at, at, at any given time, a real estate agent could have a major legal problem if they don't disclose. So just make it a habit to understand as a real estate agent, you are going to be disclosing anything and everything that could affect that deal. So it gives you four options. A is a registrant, which is yourself um, after you're licensed, and B is a builder or contractor, a spouse of a registrant or an appraiser. So in this answer, it, it's kind of it's kind of clear what you're going to be picking. So the registrant is A, you're going to pick that as your answer. You're also going to look at the spouse of a registrant who might have the same access to information or that, uh, of course, you know, when they get home, they have uh, conversations over dinner, which can give that spouse a lot of knowledge. So she might have an upper hand uh, on a transaction to understand what, why somebody's motivated to sell a property or not. So that information is important. So your answer for that next question would be A and C, which would be a registrant and then the spouse of a registrant. Um, for when it comes to a builder, contractor, and appraiser, they're not really obligated. They're not regulated by the real estate board, so they're not going to be obligated to disclose anything, um, even if they're buying it for themselves because they're not a real estate agent. So they're not actually conducting the transactions themselves. Okay, so there's another question um, that asks, which of the following is not applicable to defects of improper installation in a building? Um, it gives you a couple of options. They're all correct, actually. And the only the only option that doesn't make sense, it says improper concrete mix. Um, nobody would be aware of a defect after the fact. So during the time concrete gets mixed up, um, those people that are on that contract, um, it would be very hard for somebody to find that defect and be able to prove it. So the improper concrete mix would probably be your only answer that would come up in that type of a question, okay? Uh, next question we're going to be looking at here says, condominium ownership is two-dimensional, which includes A is private ownership, B is dual ownership, C is joint ownership, and D is individual ownership. So uh, condominium ownership is two-dimensional. So we're gonna go with only two choices for this answer. The correct answer is one is private ownership so that you own it privately yourself, your company or your corporation buys it as an asset of real estate. So it's all, it's a private ownership. 
Um, and the other answer would be C, which is um, a joint ownership. And a joint ownership would mean that you've bought it with someone else, whether it's a group, whether it's a, um, a real estate syndicate, if you know what that is. That's where basically a group of people get together and they buy a piece of real estate as one whole. So that could be the joint membership. Um, so that would be your answer for that question. It would be A and C. Okay. Now, um, moving on to another question, uh, it asks, which of the following is not one of the criteria for choosing client management software for practitioner use? Probably the ISP provider would be um, a reason for you not to choose. Um, that would probably be a reason that you would not be affected to make a choice. So your ISP provider would be the correct answer on that one. Next question is, which of the following is not applicable to the bundle of rights included in a fee simple estate? Now fee simple estate, if just in case there's any confusion, think of it as a detached home. Um, I'm pretty sure you've been to one or you own one or you've seen them. They're homes that don't have condo fees, they're on free freehold land, the, the property doesn't have any condominium association. So literally you own the land and you own the property. So that is a fee simple estate. That means there's, it has the least amount of restrictions on it. So you can barbecue, you can put up balloons in the backyard, you can put up plants in the front, you can do pretty much anything that's not, as long as it's not illegal and it doesn't hinder the city bylaws. See, in a condominium, um, you might have other rules like you can't put up a TV satellite dish, um, you can't paint um, inside the wall a certain color, you might, you might not be able to put blinds that have a funny color that show up in the window because there's 300 units in a high rise and we can't have all of these array of colors, so the back of your blinds gotta be white, so everything looks uniform as in one color. So, um, so which is not which is not a part of the bundle of rights is called absolute ownership. Um, so when you look at that definition, I'd like you to read it and check that out so you understand what it means. So absolute ownership is not a part of the bundle of rights, just so you understand, okay? Now, the next question is, which of the following may be an example of undue influence? Um, so this one has, this question, if it comes up, um, one of the answers is one party is immediate want and sacrifices for future advantage. Usually this question is all of the above. It'll give you three options. So if you read the definition of undue influence, it will give you um, the choice of three. Pretty much that's the answer, okay? Now a realtor, a realtor code is designed to do what? Um, it gives you three options in the question and it's usually all of the above. Um, one, one answer, for example, to, to kind of show you what it is, it's ensure honorable, faithful, competent service to all clients and customers. Kind of like what we discussed in the first question, which is all about your fiduciary duty as a real estate agent, okay? Um, we'll move over to another question now. Okay, so now all of the industry members in Saskatchewan are required to abide by which of the following provisions usually has three answers and the fourth one is all of the above. In most cases, it's all of the above. Um, one of the answers that um, is gonna come up is agency law and contract law. So those are required to abide by the following provisions of the, the industry members of Saskatchewan, okay? Um, the next question is, which of the following statements relative to commission is not correct? Okay, so in, in, this, in this question, it'll give you four options typically. The correct answer you want to focus on is brokerages may receive the commission directly from their principal, okay? So brokerages receive the commission directly and no other sources are applicable. So in this case, uh, what, it's, what it's trying to explain to you is your principal is your customer. So if you're a brokerage who does a listing for 5% on a $100,000 home, your principal, who's the seller, owes you that money of $5,000 as commission. And when that money comes to you, that's the only person that is allowed to pay you. So whether it's a seller or buyer, depending upon how the fee is structured, uh, the commissions are all payable to the brokerage and then the realtor can collect his commission from the brokerage, okay? So the next question is, um, one way that housing styles can be classified is by the structural method used in construction. Which of the following terms does not describe a structure of this of method? So the answer is vaulted ceilings. Uh, vaulted ceilings have no connection with 
d describing a type of structure for construction, okay? So that would be your answer on that question, and you'll see that. Next question is, which of the following statements does not apply to latent defect? Um, the, the answer here is a situation where uh, Cavett mTOR applies to clients. So basically when you see those words, that's the one that doesn't apply to latent defects, okay? To make it simple. If you don't understand the definition, open that up and we can go over that together later on. Uh, next question is, the biggest advantage of web-based email um, is you can access your email from the internet connected computer anywhere. Uh, I think they're trying to make you understand that it's something that gives you an active tool to connect with everybody wherever you are. And it's a pretty simplistic answer, so it's easy to figure out even if you didn't r understand the, uh, like how to get the answer. It's just basically describing your uh, availability to connect with everybody else using any computer at any location. Okay. Which of the following statements is not applicable to the property condition disclosure statement? That is your PCDS. And the correct answer here is that it relieves the agent from his or her obligations to determine the condition of the property. So now what you're doing is, it's, it's not so much that you're putting the onus on the seller. What you're trying to accomplish is that the real estate agent is not a home inspector, is not a construction person. Um, a lot of times a real estate agent can only determine what he can see, but you can't see what's behind the walls. You can't see certain things that are not, not visible to, to the naked eye. So the real estate agent is doing his duty by having the seller sign a disclosure statement, which will, which will show the, the potential buyer what could be possible issues in this home or what previous possible issues have come up and how to deal with them, okay? Now we move over, move over to another question which asks us, when the court orders the terms of a contract to be carried out rather than award damages, the court is re referring to what? So if the court is gonna say, listen, this contract says this, and this is what I want you guys to go do and carry out, um, that is called specific performance, okay? So if the court is not awarding damages and they're saying, nope, you're gonna go fulfill this contract, that's what, that's what that means, that's how you get that answer. Now, value and exchange is simple, okay? That answer is value and exchange is exactly market value. So how do you get market value? Market value is when you look at things that are in a reasonable market where supply and demand is pretty fairly normal. And let's say that um, um, a black leather wallet sells at five retailers for $20. That's considered market value. That's pretty much what they're all offering it at. It's a consistent price. And um, it gives you the kind of understanding that's also value and exchange and market value mean the same thing. Even though they have two different titles, but they mean the same thing. Which of the following is not one of the key problem areas in an agency relationship where disputes often arise? So what is not a problem? Um, it, it would probably come down to the answers that are gonna come up, or uh, three of them are gonna be correct. The answer that you're looking for for this question is who has the authority? So the, the only time when you have um, a lot of problems happening is that you're not able to understand what the relationship is and why these issues keep coming up. So it says, which of the following is not a key problem area in an agency relationship from where disputes often arise? So what's not an issue is who has the authority. So we, in, in, in agency relationship, it's pretty clear who has the authority and who's doing what. So agency relationship doesn't have to um, put you into a confusion of who is in charge or who is in authority of doing what. So that's that would be your correct answer. Now moving over to another question, it says, um, let's see here, we've got a couple of other questions here. Let's start with this one. For which of the following properties would an appraiser be most justified in employing the cost method approach to determine the market value? Okay, so we've got an appraiser. Um, he wants to justify using the cost method approach um, um, to, de to determine the market value. So what he's gonna look at is, um, he's gonna look at something that's newly constructed of usually straightforward design. So let's say there's a newly constructed church of a contemporary design. That's one of the possible answers. 
that would be the well-fitted answer for this question because you're looking at something that's newly constructed and a pretty straightforward type thing. Okay. Uh, next question is, which of the following is a significant characteristic of improved land? Um, it's going to give you three options. They're actually all correct in this one. Um, when you look up the characteristics of improved land, you'll see that they, they all make sense. Um, they're all pretty straightforward. Next question is, which of the following statements are applicable in regards to the Personal Information Protection and Electric, uh, Electric Documents Act? Uh, that's your PIPID. Uh, is how we say it. Um, a is the act applies to all registrants in Saskatchewan. Okay. B is uh, there are plans to put um, in place specific Saskatchewan privacy legislation. C is all registrants adhere to Korea's privacy code. D says the act provides that no personal information of consumers will be collected, used, or disclosed by businesses without the informed consent of the individual. So your answer is A and D. Um, the first one, A, says the act applies to all registrants in Saskatchewan, which it does. So when you think of um, your protection for electronic documents, just remember that it applies to every single real estate agent. So that's every single registrant, um, and that's in the province. And then D said that the act provides that no personal information of consumers will be collected, used, or disclosed by businesses without the informed consent. So if you remember when you sign up for some emails, they'll ask you for your permission. Can we um, have you, you know, prescribe to our list and to our other providers that are our partners? They'll ask you for permission. So without permission or informed consent, you are not allowed to distribute that information. So that would be A and D is the answer for that. Okay. Next question is, which of the following is not applicable to terrorist activity, which has um, its main objective to intimidate a population or compel a government to do something? So if you have a group of terrorists that are trying to compel a government to do something, which of these, which of the things that do not apply? Um, usually the answers will give you a couple of options like, um, you know, they're trying to harm people, they're trying to do some activities that harm the public, or they're trying to do something that could harm um, public facilities, right? Um, like say the, you know, the public drinking water supply, they want to do something there. Um, one of the fourth options that they gave was carrying out currency smuggling. And if you remember the first question when we talked about it, um, usually when we talk about criminal activity, it's a separate classification. So it's under a different category. So when, uh, one, one of the things that would not apply in this question would be carrying out the currency smuggling. So that would be your answer. Um, the next question, the next question is, which of the following statements does not apply to uh, patent defect? Um, the correct answer for patent defect, which does not apply to it, is a microscopic crack in the heat exchanger of a furnace or something like that. So something that's super tiny doesn't really affect anything per se at the moment. Um, that would be um, not a patent defect. Patent defect would be something that you can clearly see and it's a big problem. Uh, which of the following types of insulation is banned in Canada? Um, it's called UFI, U-F-F-I. Um, so that is your answer and that is banned in Canada, just so you know. Next question is, which of the following can't be obtained from a current mortgage statement from a lender? Okay, so what can you not get from a current mortgage statement from a lender? The correct answer is the current market value of the property. So your lender on a mortgage statement of any lender of any bank would never give you the current market value of that property. That will only come from a real estate agent's assessment. You could get the appraisal value, but that's not really the current market value because the market value is usually higher than appraisal value in most cases. Um, but again, you have to check, it depends on the property. In appraising an income producing property using the income method, gross potential rents must be estimated. How are gross potential rents best determined? Okay, so how do we, how do we, put, how do we calculate that? How do we figure that out? The answer is it's based on the actual current rents of similar properties. It's that simple. So if you're gonna appraise an income property and you are gonna use an uh, uh, income method the gross potential rents you want, they have to be estimated. You're just going to use a, based on the actual rents of similar properties. So if you're talking about a condo in a condo building and some of the units are rented out for say $1,000 and you want to do an estimation, you're probably going to base it on those $1,000 examples.
Okay. Next question is, which of the following is not a basic obligation under buyer single agency? So what's not an obligation if you're under a single agency? Well, you don't have to act as a dual agent or a limited dual agent. So acting as a limited dual agent doesn't have to be done. So it's not a basic obligation under buyer single agency. Now, property management, what does it mean? It's giving you two options. Um, it's gonna be the first two usually. So property management, what it usually means is that it's being professionally managed, it's been taken care of for the owner. Uh, the owner has to be notified of everything when it happens. Um, property management companies responsible for reporting everything immediately to the landlord if, if, if anything does come up. Now, which of the following is not one of the key risks when utilizing limited dual agency? So one of the risks that you have when you're using limited dual agency or one of the risks that you do not have is that there may be lower commission rates. So there, that is not a risk you have to take when you're, when you're conducting limited dual agency. Commission is not a concern. Okay, next question is a trade in real estate refers to which of the following? Um, usually it's all of them. They're gonna give you some examples. Um, a, tr a trade is usually when something is already done and finished, occurred, closed. So uh, they're pretty straightforward and easy to understand. If you have any difficulty, you can ask me those questions after. Um, there are many different types of condominiums which include what? So obviously there's high rise buildings, there's townhouses that look like they're freehold, but they're not, they're actually condos. So there's so many different versions. There's also uh, commercial condos. Um, so a lot of different properties can be condos. It just depends on how it was constructed and um, what it was declared as to the government. So um, there's a lot of fine examples we can go through. Which uh, Next question is, which of the following is currently not one of the types of agency practiced in the real estate industry in Saskatchewan? There's only one that we don't practice there and that's called designated agency. That's all you have to remember, okay? Which of the following could be an indicator of a leaky basement? Uh, pretty much a lot of things could be. You could have that musky smell. You could see some wetness. You could see some puddle spots. You could see quite a bit of cracking. So there could be quite a few examples of, um, usually it's, the answer is all of the above when it comes up as a question, but you'll probably catch um, a lot of those familiar um, signs of it. So which of the following is not applicable to assessed value of a property? Um, the, it's the only one that's not applicable to assess the value of a property is the mill rate of one hundredth of a dollar. So when you think of mill rate, one hundredth of a dollar, that's your only answer that you're going to pick. Which of the following is not applicable to market value? Um, it's an accomplished or historical fact. So what's not, what's not applicable is the accomplished or historical fact because um, market value is based on what it's being offered at right now, not what it's being sold at. So when you sell something, it's known as market price. So when it actually firmly sells, it becomes market price. But prior to that, um, it's not a historical fact or it's nothing like that because market price could be a new price based on that new condition in the market. Okay, so the commission consists of, remember this answer is very straightforward. The commission consists of 11 persons. 11 people make up the commission. So when the commission is asked as a question, how many people are involved in it, it's always 11. Okay, so now the next question is from the information provided, what is the corrective effective age over economic life ratio? So all you have to remember is 15 divided by 50 or 15 over 50. So just remember the verbiage, it's 15 over 50, okay? Uh, an agency relationship can be terminated by acts of the parties, which of the following is not applicable. And the only thing that's not applicable um, for termination by the acts of the parties is called impossibility. So impossibility is um, one, of the, one of the items that does not apply, okay? Which of the following statements is not a correct statement with regards to value? Okay, so there are two approaches to value, income approach and cost approach. So which of the following statements is not a correct statement which, which, with regards to value is the two approaches, income approach and cost approach is the answer. Okay, so let's move over to, we'll wrap up one more question before we get into making another, um, another video. 
Which of the following is not a typical style of a, of a residential home in Saskatchewan? Your answer is a three-story split. Three-story splits are extremely rare and it's not a typical style at all in Saskatchewan.